Hello and welcome to our channel Artesmia for a new video about electronics. This one will be a short one and it is entirely about various ESP32 S2 Mini development boards. As we all know there's the brand one made by Lolin and numerous clones. I've used quite a few ESP32 D1 Mini clone boards and never had any issues with them. The clones of the ESP32 S2 Mini cost just a few cents more than the D1 Mini and I thought I would give them a try and if they were any good they would replace the uh, D1 Mini as they are more powerful than the D1 Mini. The one thing that most bothers me with the uh, D1 Mini is that it's not supported by the ESP IDF and also it has some issues about deep sleep. But with the ESP32 S2 Mini things are not as easy as they appear. One problem common to all of these uh, S2 Mini boards the computer does not recognize the board automatically as you plug it in and to flash the code you have to plug the board in the USB port and manually put the board in download mode pressing the O button then the reset button release the reset button and finally release the O button and the boards stay in this uploading mode just a few seconds so you have to be very fast to flash after you put the board in the flashing mode if your board flashes at all and after your board is done flashing it does not reset itself you either have to press the reset button or unplug the USB port and then plug your board again either in a, another USB port or use it with 3.3 volts or 5 volts whatever your project is. The brand name board the Lolin was the only one that I was able to go through this protocol without any problem for the whole batch. The clones are another story. There are two sets of problems. They flash or they don't and if they flash they work as they're supposed to or they don't. Two of the main issues is that some do not connect to Wi-Fi and or they work when connected to the computer via USB port but they don't if powered directly whether 3.3 volts or 5.5 volts. Searching the net I came with three possible fixes. 1. Connect the USB shield to the ground pin. 2. Connect C14 capacitor to ground. 3. Place a capacitor in parallel to the reset button which effectively places a capacitor between the reset pin and ground. I read that the capacitor had to be 22 microfarads. I had only 10 microfarads available and it worked. The fixes are not mutually exclusive. If one of them doesn't work, use another one. For shorting, I'm using 0.6 millimeter copper wire. I had some success with most of the boards. Only the low-end boards didn't need any kind of tampering. For some of the boards, it is a power issue. The low-end boots and works with normal power and from any source USB 3.3 or 5 volt pins. For some of the clones you have to use a much higher power source and eventually they work. Out of 12 boards total, two of them I was not able to flash no matter the treatment given and they were from different manufacturers. I used the boards with a sketch that flashes randomly two LEDs independently from one another and I measured the current with a 0.1 ohm resistor in series with a 3.3 volts entry pin. Surprisingly the Lowland had a higher amp reading than the others, small but consistent over several readings. The clones that did work were all within 2 milliamps from one another. Here are some pictures of the boards and the fixes. Of these two, the one with the fishing line is the original Lowland one and the other one is a clone. As you can see the markings are quite similar. This one has C14 connected to ground with a 0.6 millimeter copper wire. This one also has C14 to ground and a 1206 10 microfarad capacitor in parallel with a reset button. This one has the USB port shield connected to ground. All of these work with an eventually beefed up power supply. My conclusion? The brand name board cost at least twice as much as the clones and 20% of the clones were useless. The rest worked fine with eventually some fiddling. I would say it's not worth it buying the brand name just buy the, the clones but buy from several vendors. Remember that in electronics two is one and one is none.
If your project is crucial and you're not going to do a lot of boards, then just go with a brand name. If you like the content of our video or if you found it even remotely useful, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. See you soon for the next episode.